So let's take a look at a cool new White Scars Marine, some teasers of things to come, and a whole bunch of 40k releases, present and future, with a roundup of Games Workshop's news over the past week or so. Hello and welcome back to All Specs Tactics, where today I thought I'd do another roundup of Games Workshop's news. The most major reveals for the past week have been at Adepticon with those new Chaos Battle Forces and miniatures, though there has been quite a lot of other stuff going on, and in this video I thought it would be worth doing a roundup of a fair few different topics that didn't really need an entire video in their own right, but I thought they were interesting enough to mention on the channel. In this one there's a new White Scars related miniature, some very medical looking teasers, perhaps a hint that Kill Team Nightmare might be on the horizon, a whole bunch of things going up for pre-order including plenty of Legion Imperialis, and a rather angry loyalist world eater, a promotion on Games Workshop's web store, and a quick talk through the 40k releases that we know that are coming fairly soon. Lots to talk about, so let's jump straight in. First up, perhaps one of the coolest reveals over the past week was this new White Scar. Apparently he is called Hebu Khan, a White Scar Khan who initially declared for Horus and rose up to betray their Primarch, but who later returned to the fold in about as much of a redemption story as 40k ever gets allows to serve as kind of cannon fodder on the front lines as part of a formation called the Sagiar Mazan, almost sounds like a bit like the White Scars version of Death Company. Dishonored Oathbreakers seeking an honourable end in combat, dragging down as many enemies of the Emperor as they can possibly take with them. He's a character already existent in the Horus Heresy novels, apparently his plotline is from the Horus Heresy novel Scars. In any case though, his miniature does seem to have been really quite a nicely received one, Always kind of fun when one of the lesions and chapters that gets the least attention gets a fun and characterful new model. Could be an interesting enough one for White Scars collectors and Warhammer 40k, maybe standing in for a captain or a lieutenant. This guy's wearing chunky Mark II Crusade armour, and has really quite a cool and stylized helm in my opinion. It's replete with a top knot, and is armed with some classic White Scars curved blades, a two-handed power sword being his primary weapon. As with quite a few of these heresy kits, there is the option to swap out his head. You do have a bareheaded version, though I think that the helmet looks far cooler personally. It's a little hard to tell, but I think that that lack of nose that you can see there is just due to his face paint, painting him up as a nice skull mask, as opposed to actually having had some sort of horrendous battle injury. It is maybe just a little bit hard to tell from first glance at a single still shot, though. In general, the miniature seems to have received really quite well, certainly gaining a whole load of attention when I made a community post about it. Though I did notice that, as ever, people are certainly hungry for White Scars characters on bikes. It's not like the entirety of the chapter or Legion fights that way, but it is maybe one of their most iconic ways to play. It really would be cool to see a biker character release for them at some point in the future. In any case, though, for this guy, he's a resin miniature from the Horus Heresy character series. I'd guess that his price is going to be £36.56 or 45 euros, that's based on other similar named characters such as Lucius of the Emperor's Children, or very expensive one character miniature, as ever Forge World prices tend to put Games Workshop's own character prices to shame. There were a few other shots of him as well, in this one you can see his fur wreathed cloak and a fair bit more of the details, quite a fun dynamic miniature overall I think, let me know what you make of him down in the comments. Next up, I feel like Games Workshop's rumour engines are maybe a bit hit or miss, though this week's one was definitely something for Warhammer 40k. Looks like we've got a servo skull with a beady bionic eye attached to a drill of some sort. The drill looking maybe like it's a bit scuffed or beaten up round at the worky end, unless that smears of blood or something else gruesome. I'm not necessarily sure if these two belong next to each other, but one of the first things that I thought when I saw this new one was that it does kind of bear resemblance to a servo skull that's been dispensing something here on the right. I thought this one potentially looked like it might be dispensing a bandage type thing and could be another sort of high-tech imperial medic type thing. It does make me wonder if between the two these might come from the same miniature or set of miniatures. I'd guess that a servo skull armed with a drill would probably be something medical given that that seems to be something that Games Workshop quite like to have on their medics and apothecary style models. I guess it could be something mechanical or engineer repair type things. It doesn't really look big enough to be a big weapon in its own right or for mining sort of things. I saw a fair bit of speculation talking about it. One thing I saw speculated about was the possibility of a Deathcore Quartermaster. Deathcore Krieg have definitely been rumoured for a fair while now to get some sort of range update. And while it existed in the Forge World line, it was sort of like their medic type unit. A little retinue complete with a rather sinister medical device type thing. 
which admittedly didn't have servo scores bearing anything, though I feel like it wouldn't be impossible that you could reinterpret it with that kind of way. Otherwise, given the look of the drill and the skull itself, it could be something like a Gene Stealer cult medic character. They're going to be getting some sort of release alongside their codex, and while they're definitely overburdened with special characters already, it doesn't seem impossible that that could be the case. I guess they've already got the Biophages, though he feels maybe a bit more in the sort of line of mad scientist as opposed to medic to try and patch up the troops. I feel like the look of the casing of the drill and maybe the sort of ridged bits on the forehead could go along with that perhaps. Otherwise, we basically know that we're getting a World Eaters Berserker Surgeon the next time they get a big release. It was a character that was talked about in the lore really quite a lot as the guy who makes the eight cages and keeps the mad World Eaters as somewhat functional. I can't help but think that we might have a few more clues that the skull and drill bits were more obviously chaos in that case, though again it's possible. Any of these could just basically be any sort of Space Marine Apothecary variant as well, either chapter specific or maybe like a Terminator one. Lots of possibilities, let me know what you think though, and do these come from the same kit or are they two different offerings? Next up on the Warhammer release front, Kill Team Nightmare looks like it could be just around the corner. This one's the long-awaited Night Lords vs. Drukari Mandrakes box set. Night Lords shown off in early December, so it's basically a four-month lag time between them being revealed and them being released. I've been expecting each preview weekend for a good long while now to be Kill Team Nightmare, but it just repeatedly hasn't been materialising. I don't know if Games Workshop's had some sort of delay with production of it, or they're saving the release for some sort of arbitrary quarterly financial target. But basically today they have announced that there's a Kill Team Battle Report going up on Warhammer Plus, so at least a fairly reasonable chance that it could be the next Sunday preview that we find out that this is coming. Usually when they do battle reports on Warhammer Plus these days, they tend to be at least fairly close to the actual release of the miniatures. It more commonly tends to be the exact same week, so you get the battle report and then the things go up for pre-order on the Saturday. That's what happened with the new crew. So fingers crossed for Night Lords collectors and long-suffering people who want Drukhari sculpts actually to be sold again. This really won't be too far away. It could be an even longer wait though until these come out individually. Though at least compared with some Kill Team box sets in the past, the box set doesn't have loads of terrain included. So if you just want the miniatures, there's not quite as much extra to purchase. I think it's usually quite sensible that GW releases the terrain in its individual release so that people that are interested can target that and people who just want the miniatures can target the box sets. For this week's Warhammer pre-orders though, it was nowhere to be seen. Looks like we're getting those Necromunda giant rats that they revealed on a Monday preview not so long ago. I feel like the guy on the right next to the Beastmaster type thing is about as close to Warhammer 40k Skaven as we're ever likely to get. I guess there'll be good representation for them in Age of Sigmar though, given the new edition's launch. Looks like the Rat Guy Beastmasters are in Forge World Resin, so are going to be pretty expensive. I do think they're kind of fun that they exist in the 40k setting though. Otherwise, there's Warhammer Underworld's Wintermore that's releasing this week. And beyond that, it's really quite a big release week for Legion's Imperialis. A whole squadron of small little Land Raider Proteuses for the Space Marines. A bunch of artillery support with basilisks and medusas and things for the solar auxilia. Some little drop pods for the space marines which I think are kind of fun. And a whole flotilla of Arvus lighters. I guess being repurposed from the aeronautica setting there with some new bases. Otherwise there's two different variant Warhound weapon kits being released. And a Forge World space marine coming out. The loyalist world eater Endred Ha. I think that he's a pretty cool miniature to be honest, a pretty big bulky model with a massive power fist and a cool relic pistol. His power armour really needing to make use of those thermic bonding studs given that it's kind of falling apart from lack of repairs. He's the brutal leader of a force of a bunch of shattered legions folks, waging a brutal war against the forces of Horus around the entire Beta Garmin type war scenario. Again, judging by other Forge World character releases, he'd likely be around the £36 or $56 mark. At least if they price him in the same sort of line as other similar character miniatures. Otherwise, I'm always at least a little bit interested when Games Workshop runs generic promotions for their web store. Every so often they try and give people a little bit more reason to buy through them versus buying from the usually very good third-party discount retailers. That often tends to be the way that people go due to better savings. With all their announcements of Age of Sigma at the moment, they're doing a promotion of for a theoretically free Age of Sigmar miniature ties to a purchase of £150. Apparently the translation to other currencies in their terms of conditions is 240 US dollars, 195 euros, 
and 420 Australian dollars and 300 Canadian. It'll also be sold individually as well at 21 pounds, 35 dollars or 27 euros. I'm presuming you wanted him and were absolutely prepared to pay for him at full price. In theory, that adds up to like a 12% discount of your overall spend, which in all honesty, I think is maybe a bit passable on an £150 purchase, at least compared with buying through discount retailers, who will usually be somewhere between the sort of 10 to 20%, depending on where you are in the world. Seems like if you were just planning to make a big purchase of £150 or so, it probably means you're going to be better using them. And then picking up this module separately if you'd like to, even if you did have to buy this one through Games Workshop's web store, I'm not sure, but I'd guess it might be a direct only. In any case, still might be worth being aware of. Maybe in the case of one of the Battle Force box sets coming out, and them being in a classic Games Workshop short supply, and the only place to get them is through the web store, as they don't give enough to the discount retailers, might be at least worth considering if you wanted to get some paints or something to make it up to the 150 target, and get a random extra Sigmar miniature thrown in. Kind of depends if you've got any investment in that particular setting. Probably a bit borderline to actually be interesting. It lasts until the 29th of April. And just while they're on the subject of discounts, they did mention that apparently you get a £10 Black Library discount code per £100 spent as well. Again, could theoretically be useful to some of you. Overall, I think I'm just more enthused by getting something like 15 or 20% off the miniatures in the first place. That feels like the better overall deal. And as ever, if you were looking to pick up Warhammer 40k models at a discount, I do have plenty of discount retailers linked in the video description. Any purchases made through them help to support the channel as well as save you more money than this. Well, on Age of Sigmar briefly, I thought it was interesting that they do seem to be just trying to copy as best as they can the launch for 10th edition 40k. We've had the initial animated trailer and a fair few of the details as to the new edition. Looks like they might be doing a similar sort of thing for the launch of the thing as well. Announcing Age of Sigmar Reforged events, a day when you can turn up and try out the new edition. Maybe kind of similar to what they did at their Warhammer Fest one with Screamer Killers and Ballistas Dreadnoughts for Warhammer 40k 10th. Was kind of interesting to get a little bit of lowdown on the events that happened there. In general, it didn't sound like the most high yield experience though. Generally, a massive queue for not really all that much gameplay and just moving a few very basic units around without too much nuance. Finally, looking to the future, I think we've got a fairly good idea as to the near future Warhammer 40k releases. Currently, with Games Workshop's showcases and previews, we already know four biggest releases already. Kill Team Nightmare for the Drukhari versus the Night Lords. As mentioned, I'd be amazed if that isn't right around the corner now. And then after that, we've got three fairly major model releases on different weekends. The Adeptus Custodes and Orc Battle Forces and their codexes, which I'm going to guess will probably drop on the same weekend for likely a very busy weekend worth of content creation for myself. It'll be interesting to see how the Golden Boys and the Greenskins shape up. Fingers crossed they managed to realise the Orky Detachments well. I feel like they're such a great opportunity for different ways to play for the army, but they very rarely seem to make them balanced against each other. Otherwise, we'll have the full tower release with the crew kits coming out. I'm genuinely unsure as to whether or not that'll come out before or after the Custodians and Orcs battle forces. Seems like they could conceivably do them in either order to me. That'd be the first chance to get certain things like that crew lone spear or the crew hounds or anything else separately beyond the big box set. They'll also likely have the combat patrol with the Devilfish and the Pathfinders in. Finally, I'd guess after both of those, we'll get the Chaos Marine release with those fairly well-anticipated Battle Force box sets, the Dread Talons and the Veterans of the Long War. Reaction to those has been pretty positive. Then after that, as per Games Workshop's Codex roadmap, we'll have Gene Sealer Colts and Sisters coming in summer, and the Mystery Codex that hasn't been announced yet. It'll be fun to see what that will be, and it will be really cool if it was something new and surprising. Seems most likely to be Agents of the Imperium though, given the leaked printed pages that we saw from their warehouse for that. In any case, let me know what you make of all the Warhammer 40k news and releases. Do you like the White Scars miniature? What do you make of the medical teasers? And are you particularly interested in any of the upcoming 40k stuff? Look forward to hearing your thoughts as ever down in the comments below. If you've enjoyed the video, then feel free to subscribe to Allspets Tactics, or I'll certainly keep the regular 40k videos coming. I do tend to post new ones just about every day. Finally, if you have been enjoying all the videos on the channel, I would just like to mention that Allspets Tactics does have a Patreon page as well, and you can find that linked in the video description if you'd like to help support and keep these coming. Channel patrons do get a fair few advantages, seeing certain videos early, and send me regular votes to see what sort of things come next on the channel. 
and automatic entry into the regular prize giveaways with a chance to win some big model kits each month. If any of that sounds good to you or you'd just like to help support, the link is down in the video description. In any case, a massive thank you for listening and I'll hope to see you guys next time.